Yeah, hi. So hope you can hear me well. Um, thanks for the nice introduction uh, and thanks for setting the scene um, from the other guys. So um, in my talk, I want to really cope with, um, let's say, the situation where uh, auto-suggest or um, the way the user comes to the site or to the search result um, yeah, haven't been specified um, or couldn't uh, um, be, be more precise. So um, it's, it's really about how we could help the user um, to cope with large um, search results that have a lot of diversity in it. Um, yeah, I, as I as, as said, earlier, uh, said earlier, I'm working at CXP and Search.io and um, yeah, happy uh, to get some, uh, some direct messages. Um, you can find me on Twitter, yeah. Um, just one slide about um, um, the companies. Um, so uh, Commerce Experts, um, this is uh, a search and discovery dis um, consultancy. So um, here we have um, um, people that, that yeah, do optimize, design, deploy, and operate um, search platforms for their living. Uh, all of us have more experience than 10 years. Uh, and may I, may, I would say mainly in e-commerce, uh, a couple of projects uh, off this domain, but um, most is in, in e-commerce. And um, because we were tired of solving um, uh, issues over and over again at each and every customer, we built SearchUp. Uh, and SearchUp is a query intent clustering, pre-processing, um, and rewrite multivariate optimization platform. And the cool thing about this is it works with any search solution. So you can just hug it, uh, plug it in as a kind of proxy, and it helps you to automate um, your search. But now let's go back to the topic of uh, diversification. Um, so I'm a really data-driven guy. Um, and um, I was only, always thinking, yeah, we can approach the problem of um, relevancy and then optimizing e-commerce search purely by, by, by data. But um, let's say since a couple of months, um, uh, I, I, I turned this a little bit um, because data only represents what was. Um, and never tells you what could be. So um, here, this is a, this is a, I think a really nice, um, yeah. Or to put it in one sentence, um, if you are data driven, um, you are very likely um, to to be locked in a local ma maxima, um, and you're you're not really exploring. So. Um, but products that are bought very often will be bought very often, but you have potentially a lot of interesting products for some of your customers, which um, essentially will never be seen so, or explored. So uh, um, um, in my opinion, from, from, from the relevance perspective, um, relevance, at least uh, for now, doesn't directly address uh, uh, attractiveness or ambiguity or biases. Um, so search um, result diversification can really help, and especially when a quantitative relevance is not enough. Um, we can diversify if the search intent is ambiguous. Let's say garden furniture, it doesn't really look uh, ambiguous, but what type, or so there are different types of um, um, garden furniture. And what would you say, would you, should we include balcony um, um, furniture as well? Um, so I have a, I've picked an example here. Uh, of course, on the left-hand side, there's a lot of, let's say, um, stuff or accessories around garden furniture. But even if this would be a perfect garden furniture um, product list, so full with, uh, let's say, uh, some sofas and, 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 and things like that, I think the right side is, helps me way more in finding potentially the right product. Because garden furniture is a broad query, so maybe I, I'm not really sure what I want to buy yet. Um, and I want to get some, some information or I want to be guided. And I think the right hand side can do it. Not saying it's it's, it's particularly uh, um, nice or, or shiny, but it essentially can help. Um, the next part is um, when users want to be inspired. So women's shoes, um, it's, it's, it's a nice example I've always picking up, so last year too, but this time from a different angle. Um, so there might be different types of shoes and dip different types of styles of shoes. So when you look on the left, it's just a list of kind of randomly uh, um, um, sorted products. And on the right, 
these products are kind of grouped by different um, attributes. So let's say here the, the, on, on the first row, um, it's about a, a special style. Um, the second one is about a, a special type of boot. Um, uh, the third one, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest, uh, how these crocs made it in there, but I guess it's more kind of the, 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 the leisure um, um, uh, shoes. And then, of course, the heels. And the, the, the cool thing about it is that this directly gives a customer um, or a potential customer an overview of what is in there. And it gives you the opportunity to, to browse through kind of different um, um, categories or uh, facets without having to reload the page. So here I can directly see a, a, the, the broad um, um, assortment or get, get an overlook over the broad assortment without having to refine it and wait until the page loads again and then um, go back if it's not what I want to see. Um, additionally, we can di diversify when users could and should be treated differently. So let's say I'm searching for power drills. And then there might be the question, yeah, what, what can, can the result be different or should this result be different for different types of users? Um, and yeah, it can. So like on the, on the left-hand side, we, we see a sorting. It's not particularly um, well grouped in terms of visuals, but here it's kind of the, the basic um, what sells best gets the, the first place. And on, on the right side, um, when I know it's a, it's a professional craftsman, I know that he has um, special needs about a power drill. So here, um, a special products uh, come on top, let's say, uh, um, 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 the, the, the professional line or a specific brand. So it was mentioned earlier, but I think one, uh, one um, additional part is missing um, and um, how to spot these things. Um, and information entropy for me is the data-driven way of spotting these types of queries. But um, to add this on, on, on to, the, to the panel, I think we don't have a single, um, a single entropy. So of course you can just use the categories, but um, essentially it's a set of um, uh, entropies. So it, it, it might be interesting to look at different uh, product attributes, uh, price ranges, or whatever kind of information we have about the, pro um, the products. So that's why I would strongly recommend to look at the, the, the products, customers interact after, um, uh, a search and then find different um, distributions or entropy uh, entropies um, for different kinds of metadata information. So let's say uh, um, attributes and, and, and things like that. And then you can really spot things that may be interesting and may help users to fi directly find uh, what they're looking for. And another um, really important thing, and I am, I, I, I really always tell our customers to, to go and do that is go to people in, in, your, um, in, in your company. And especially if you're coming from, 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 re from re retail, there are a lot of people that have an immense uh, knowledge about how to visualize, how to group products, how to make them stand out and ask them uh, about uh, their jobs and, and, and how, how they uh, approach these things because this is essentially for free. Everything that is data-driven um, uh, costs time, costs money, uh, and can potentially be wrong. Um, if a, a person does this already for uh, 10 years, um, it might help you. Um, essentially the same for spotting different types of audiences. Um, again, you could use information entropy. Again, it's, it might be a set of different uh, entropies. Uh, and additionally, um, mar a marketing team, if you have a marketing team, go there, ask them uh, about different audiences because it's their job to uh, talk to these audiences and shape information and, uh, and, and outbound marketing towards them. Okay, so now I want to really get into how the, we, we could diversify um, things and, and different strategies to do so. So if you look inside a store, I, I've, never, I've never asked this question when I went to the store, but when I was uh, confronted with this diversity problem, uh, this question came up and I asked a person working in, in, in such a store, 
And uh, the, the person told me that none of these products you currently see here on this picture um, has its place by coincidence. It's planned months before, and there is a lot of um, um, data and, and just knowledge from people and inspiration from people that tells them hey, that they should um, um, put these kind of products together in the same area. And this kind of um, inspires me um, to, to look at it like this. So on the left side, we, have, we might have a, a, a broad query, and this might be the result. So we have some common attributes um, or, or, or common types of products represented in different colors. And on the right side, uh, I, I added a little bit of structure. So I kind of sorted them or grouped them. And by, I think, directly visually, you can see that by adding structure, it really helps you to navigate faster through this kind of set. Um, but on the other hand, it changes the problem. So now we don't have a single ranked uh, list anymore. It's several ranked lists. Um, and this, this picture and this um, um, sentence comes from um, an, an open book. So this, this book is open, uh, available, and it's called Visual Merchandising. And the interesting thing is that um, he really points out that we should group product sets um, um, in, in visually, let's say, related concept, concepts, because people can process and, and use visual information 60,000 uh, 60, times faster than text. And that really helps. So um, there are already companies that, that are doing these kind of, they call it visual merchandising. I would call it diversification. But here is a very cool example in my, in my opinion. So this not only works for search results, this works for categories as well. So let's say um, you have this nice women's accessories category. And accessories is always a mess. Um, how would you rank these kind of things? And, and here it's really a, um, the, the idea is to have to use different rows and to use different, let's say, campaigns or, or goals um, for each and every particular ro row. And now the business sorting or what the business goal that is behind it is not um, um, shown by the initial, um, um, let's say, yeah, ranking in the search result. It's how, how you um, rank the results per row. So let's say in the first row, we have scars and snoots, and, and they might be um, um, sorted by top sellers. Then on the second row, we have hats, uh, and, and there, there might, let's say, um, own brands might be pushed. And then we have gloves, um, where a different kind of strategy might come in. And um, I really think that this is a very nice way of, of giving an entry point for a user which comes to the women's accessory side because, yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff um, a customer could, could potentially want. Uh, and here you can directly guide him. And well, what, I, what I want to point out here is I don't have a, an example of, of, of a web app, but if you, if you would imagine uh, looking at this site from, an, from a, a mobile uh, point of view, what is really interesting is you could, let's say, swipe left and right um, in each and every row to, 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 to have a look at now the, the scarves and then swipe, um, swipe up um, if, if, if you're not really into scarves, maybe you're more into gloves. And once you see a glove, then swipe left and right. And again, you don't have to have an additional page request. You just are directly into the, the products and the assortment. And I, I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, one, one pro tip. So um, essentially we are, we are making it a little, bit, a little bit more complex. So we are breaking a learning to rank problem in multiple learning to rank problems. So um, we could learn to rank each and every row, um, but we could essentially also um, uh, learn how to rank the different rows. Um, the next thing um, I, I want to talk about is um, the real, let's say, um, search result um, diversification. Uh, and, and here it's really about the ranking for the diversified rows. So, um, and, and in my opinion, this is the way where we can really find a balanced match between the shopper interest to buy and the business interest to sell. So um, in a lot of cases, when I'm at the customer, the, the customer tells me, so my customer is, is the, the shop owner. 
yeah, but I don't want to sell this product because the margin is lower than others. So please push all my products that are from my brand or with high margin on top. And then I tell him, yeah, well, this might work, but potentially the customers don't just, just don't want to um, um, buy these products. Um, and it's really hard with a single ranking um, to, 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 to balance different kind of strategies. So that's why uh, a row-based ranking diversification can help. So um, as said earlier, um, you can es essentially um, give every row a different ranking uh, and really play with it. It's not only about giving them just a different ranking, but you can, you can then explore and experience how people be behave when they see these things and how they interact with it and then reshape all of that. Um, yeah, and since we really, I mean, in, in Search Hub and, and, and Commerce Experts, we really try to solve things one time uh, for all of our customers. And since, at least for now, 70% uh, of our customers still don't use open source um, um, tools um, or open source search systems, we said, okay, we need to build something to, to, to help them diversify um, um, their search results or category results. Um, and this uh, solution needs to work with each and every um, um, search solution. So from, from a business perspective, so what I essentially want is I want to have a kind of, um, yeah, SQL language where I can say, um, yeah, please group me products um, by a specific amount of attributes and then assign a specific ranking for it. You, you don't have to do this manually. I mean, you, you can essentially learn all of this pretty much automatically. But still, there might be a, a lot of cases where people are just, let's say, uh, creative and have really bright minds and want to try things. So um, you really, we said we really need to, to, to help them to do that uh, and, 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 and to ship these kind of experiments because in my opinion, it's a kind of an experience. Um, yeah. And to get these collections of items um, was a really hard engineering problem. So I already had the idea a couple of years ago um, and, and really tried to achieve this in, in, in a search engine, even in, in the e-commerce space, uh, tried it with Elastic and, and Solar. And I mean, you could achieve it, but it was always a mess and uh, it was always pretty slow. So that's why uh, I said, okay, we need to find another way where we can um, um, define and, 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 and get these collections from. Um, so what we, what we said we need then is, okay, we have this, this, this query API, we have this search engine results, and then we want to inject um, in an artificial way um, um, documents or document IDs it, it doesn't really need to be the ID. It could be the complete um, um, data that is needed to render on the front end. And then we need some kind of result blendering um, or blender that pushes these products on, on, on the right positions or building blocks uh, and then the, the result API. And yeah, of course, the system to define these groupings and rankings. There is a whole data pipeline thing around this, which I don't want to cover here because this might be different for each and every cu uh, customer. But essentially the, with this um, uh, um, system here, and if you would manually build these rules, you could directly um, um, use it. Um, we have some building blocks that we need for that. So first of all, we need a very fast and flexible um, way of grouping items and getting, let, let, let's say, the top uh, N uh, um, um, products out of it. Um, um, so, as I as, as I have shown earlier in this in, in, in the image, give me all the scarves and um, um, maybe f um, that contain winter uh, and have a specific color um, and 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 just put them somewhere. Um, then we have this um, um, item ranking on top. So where I said, yeah, well, now I have the set, but I want to rank it by. Um, I don't know, margin, uh, top sellers, and uh, another metric that might be there. And then for exploration, um, I said, okay, but on top of that, because we need some kind of randomization uh, in there as well, because otherwise we are, we, we, we are um, stuck in the, in the same potential uh, local optimum as well. 
we need some kind of really uh, um, a fast weighted sampling. So there, what we would do is we would go in, in, in these uh, groups of, of products, um, that, which might be, let's say, 50 uh, products. We only show four of them. But how to pick the four out of the 50, this um, will be done by weighted sampling. So by that, we can, in, we can ensure that new products or products that have never been seen yet um, are injected there and have a chance to, um, to be clicked, bought, and whatnot. And then we need this feature that um, takes this set of products and pins it on top um, of um, the, the, the result list. And of course, in a deduplicated way, I don't want to show the same products, let's say, twice or, or even more. OK, so this is how we solved it. Um, so the first part um, uh, was, a, was the really a hard part, the engineering problem. But fortunately, um, we found somebody who have already solved this. So uh, we really tried a lot of approaches, different databases. Um, used our own data structures um, to get this fast uh, done. But then I, by, by a coincidence, I stumbled about um, um, yeah, a project which is called um, Collection Query Engine. And the performance of this thing and the usage and, and the solidness is just mind blowing. So um, that's why I, I put it here. I mean, we will put it together in, a, in, in, in this kind of um, diversification package for search, but still have a look at this um, uh, um, repo. Uh, it's it's really amazing. So with that, we would do the grouping and we would do the initial ranking. Then we had to um, uh, um, solve this um, fast top K um, weighted sampling thing. Um, again, there were a couple of implementations, but uh, all the implementations, at least I found, um, were too slow. Um, uh, so, by, by, by just a, a simple trick, um, we were able to really reduce this, um, uh, and, and, and now you, we could, let's say, for, for one page, where you have, let's say, five different rows, um, you could do this um, weighted sampling in less than a millisecond. So, essentially, you have then four times, or if you have five rows, four rows where you might um, want to use this weighted sampling, and it's, it's so fast that you can't even measure it. Um, and on the on, and on then the last one um, is the pinning. Um, so we 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 are thinking about having a way of injecting these um, um, products uh, on top of let's say the normal result set, because we want to make sure that all the facets and the, and, and and stuff are still working perfectly. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, um, the pandemic infected our <laughs> release uh, schedule. So stay tuned. We will. Um, update our open commerce search uh, project and um, it will find its way in there as well. Yeah, so um, my, this is essentially uh, my, my, my last important slide. So let's start balancing the match between the shopper interest to buy and the business interest to sell and, 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 and really make some big progress there because I still feel that, yeah, these, these, um, we don't have a balanced match yet. It, it might be data driven, but we are not trying to do the best uh, we can for both of the, the audiences. Yeah, thanks. And uh, if you have any questions and if there are some developers or people that just want to work on these kind of areas, um, join our team. Thanks.